December 4, 2018. The USPTO issues a mysterious patent to the Navy for this. A hybrid aerospace undersea craft capable of extreme speeds in water, air, and space. It takes advantage of a quantum mechanics concept once thought impossible, manipulating microscopic fluctuations always present in the vacuum of empty space. In this video, we'll show the patent isn't as far-fetched as some say. Many of the theories needed for it to work have already been proven experimentally. They've just been misunderstood by journalists who don't have a background in physics. We cover unique declassified files. Subscribe to join us. The story starts with Salvatore Pais. The inventor listed on the patent, Pais worked on it while employed by the Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division, or NACAD. It oversees all R&D for Navy aircraft and tests them in 2,700 square miles of restricted airspace over the Mid-Atlantic. Pais breaks the craft down into four components, an inner wall, outer wall, microwave emitters, and something called an inertial mass reduction device. The craft works, he says, by emitting high-frequency electromagnetic waves throughout the cavity between the inner and outer walls, causing it to vibrate. The cavity between both walls needs to be filled with a noble gas. He claims, if done correctly, the craft can interact with the empty space surrounding it allowing it to behave anomalously. Remember those microscopic fluctuations always present in a vacuum we mentioned? It basically means empty space isn't really empty. For decades, quantum mechanics predicted this. Reality is filled with tiny particles that blink in and out of existence. And it was finally proven in 1997. Researchers placed two conducting surfaces very close together, within a micron. The gap between the surfaces only allows for some particles to flicker in and out, while outside the plates, more types of particles exist. This imbalance pushes in on the metal plates, forcing them together. Known as the Casimir force, it opens a new realm of physics. Experts are now working on ways to interact with this vacuum energy. And it's this that Pai suggests can propel his craft. Right now, academic circles are attempting to do this with high-powered lasers. They call it breaking the vacuum. A group in Shanghai did it like this. First, they sent light through a sapphire crystal and several lenses. They then released this into a single powerful pulse for just a trillionth of a second. A more powerful laser is expected to go online by 2023, and when focused on a small enough spot, its intensity will be 10 to the 24 watts per square centimeter, 25 orders of magnitude stronger than sunlight hitting the Earth. If we can get that number to 10 to the 29, the brief pulse of light is expected to break the vacuum, pulling electrons and other particles seemingly out of nothing. But it's just E equals mc squared, converting energy into matter. At high energies, we're more familiar with it working the other way around, like with nuclear weapons. In 2017, German scientists got close to this and were able to squeeze the vacuum. They observed quantum fluctuations reverberating like a rubber band. So file that away in your mind. We can interact with this hidden vacuum. But how far can we take this? And can it be used to propel a craft? According to the Navy filings, Pais isn't looking to use a laser to break the vacuum, but rather another patented device, a high-energy electromagnetic field generator. He says it works like this. It's encased by a shell made of a special metamaterial, probably a ceramic. Inside, an electric motor powered by thermal energy forces the shell to spin. The unique material, when spinning fast enough, will generate an electromagnetic field. Two years ago, Pais and a Navy attorney told a patent examiner their device was in early stages, but operable. This letter from the Chief Technology Officer of Naval Air Systems Command says something similar. 
adding pies was already testing a shell. Based on these initial findings, I would assert this will become a reality, he said, adding, China is already investing significantly in this area. Two years later, and the paper trail hasn't been updated. We don't know if R&D remains stuck there. But if Pais got past that, the rest of the craft may work. And again, quantum physics explains why. Assuming a working generator is inside a craft, Pais suggests what matters next happens between the inner and outer walls. If this space is filled with a gas like xenon, microwave emitters powered by the generator could force the gas into a plasma. And here's the real leap. Pais believes this plasma-lined hull, surrounded by an electromagnetic field strong enough to stimulate its local vacuum, can achieve a state called macroscopic quantum coherence. It sounds complex, but bear with us. It can be simplified. At tiny scales, all of the particles around us behave like waves. An electron isn't sitting in space while we aren't looking. Rather, it's a wave of probabilities of where the electron will be when it is observed. The famed double slit experiment proved this. Electrons, when passed through a double slit, diffracted like water waves. Decoherence is the process of the weird quantum realm becoming normal, like the world we see. It's counterintuitive, but proven by decades of research. Macroscopic quantum coherence, then, is something we can observe that still retains some odd quantumness. Helium, the second most abundant element in the universe, can do this. When cooled to near absolute zero, it does things that sound impossible. Leak through a solid beaker, evaporate upward against gravity. And when stirred, it forms a vortex that rotates indefinitely. Six Nobel Prizes in the last 25 years have been given for research into this, and we haven't come close to grasping the full potential here. It's speculated very high temperatures can achieve this too. In his patents with the Navy, Pai's theories suggest the craft itself can reach this state. Documents attached to the patent claim, high frequency spin with high frequency vibration, puts every point on the boundary of the object in a state of coherence, inducing a macroscopic quantum phenomena. We said this was the real leap earlier, because it is. There's nothing experimentally that can verify whether or not a vehicle can achieve quantum weirdness. Though, if this is eventually figured out, that's where the real magic is. With coherence achieved, the craft may not be subject to the force of gravity or have inertia. Remember, since by interacting with the vacuum, we'd be pulling particles out of it, there'd be a void in the area surrounding the craft. That may allow for smooth sailing through the void, Pais writes. There are fewer particles flickering in and out of existence. Ultimately, we don't know how far the Navy got, but the main concepts, vacuum energy, macro-quantum behavior, have already been proven in experiments. It's just a matter of applying this to different uses. Consider this. If superfluids look strange, imagine how a craft with these properties might look to an observer. The British government's Project Condine, a massive study on UFOs, classified triangle pyramid cones as a key category. It tracked them in Belgium and the Soviet Union. The report even suggested, 20 years before Pai's research, that black triangle UFOs could be surrounded by plasma formations emitting an unknown field. Similar sightings date back to the 1500s, when Nuremberg, Germany saw hundreds of spheres and cylinders moving erratically in the sky, along with a large black triangle. In more modern times, the most infamous example may be the Phoenix Lights, a 1997 encounter where Arizona residents saw a mile-wide triangle drift slowly overhead. In 2000, police officers in southern Illinois reported seeing a large triangle flying silently above treetops. 
Pai says in the patent that such a craft may need to be a cone or a triangle shape to work. What do you think? Could military craft explain some parts of the UFO phenomenon? How do you think the Navy got this information? And what do you make of macroscopic quantum phenomena? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Patreon supporters, thank you so much, including Donald L. If you like what we do, consider joining them on Patreon and help us produce one new episode every week. Thanks again. See you next time.